Good evening. My name is David Bailey. I'm the president of the Clarion University Alumni Association Board of Directors. And I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to the first web broadcast of our conversation with the president of the university, Dr. Karen Whitney. I'll introduce her officially in a few moments, but we want to uh, take this opportunity to say that this is the first of what will become hopefully a regular part of our alumni outreach efforts. We're going to do this once a semester. We'll announce the date for the spring session before we close tonight. And we want to do this so that we give you an opportunity to bring your questions to Dr. Whitney and get uh, an answer for uh, the future of Clarion, for things that are happening here. Uh, the university is constantly changing, so we want you to be a part of that wherever you are out there. Bro we're broadcasting really uh, all across the web, and we hope that you'll take the opportunity to join us. Uh, you did receive an email about tonight, but if you do have questions, be sure that you forward them, and the email address is info at clarion.edu, and if you do that, uh, they will get through and will appear here and will be uh, taken tonight as we go through the next hour. First of all, I want to talk about what is an alumni association. <laughs> well, we are 51,000 plus strong, and there are alumni in every county of Pennsylvania, in every state of the Union, and in many countries around the world. So we really do have quite an outreach from Clarion University out through uh, many different fields of endeavor and many countries of the world. So we hope that the many of you tonight are taking part in this and enjoying the conversation we're about to have. The Alumni Association has several missions that we do with the university. Uh, it empowers us, uh, we try to empower the university, rather, to support the mission of Clarion University. We do that through advocacy and through relationships that we have sustained, uh, spirit of loyalty, fellowship, and being part of things that occur here in Clarion. The Alumni Association is a, one of the primary resources for the university to fulfill its mission with enhanced participation and expanded opportunities uh, we want you to always feel free to come back and be part of the things that we do, and we have several events that we'll mention uh, that occur each year. We promote the, the value of an affordable and accessible public education, and we connect with all of the university students. We try to do it from the time that they actually are recruited and admitted here to their eventual graduation and, and the ensuing career and life that, uh, that they have after Clarion, we foster their development as contributing alumni. <coughs> we have many involvements. One of those are through activities such as Alumni Weekend, and that's coming to occur this year, June 6th, 7th, and 8th. We have Homecoming, uh, September 26th and 27th, and we have a lot of other volunteer opportunities. And we could also always use good people to serve on our boards and to nominate people for the distinguished awards that we present each year. It's now my pleasure to introduce President of Clarion University, Dr. Karen Whitney. This is the fourth year of her presidency at Clarion, and those years I think have gone pretty quickly. Yes. And uh, there, it's been a great experience, I think, because you've been able to work with colleagues, students, you've listened to the community, you've listened to the students, listened to the faculty, and one of your uh, good things that you've been doing here are strategic planning and uh, working for the future of, of Clarion to make sure it's sustained through the through now and the years to come. Uh, you now have worked with a full cycle of students from freshmen right through to seniors. Great. And so it's with great pleasure that I turn the, the microphone over <laughs> to Dr. Karen Whitney and we'll, we'll take your questions here as we go through the evening. Thank you, David. Sure, Thanks. Sure. Uh, this is very exciting. Uh, this is a first uh, uh, web uh, broadcast that I've ever done in my 35 years at higher ed, and I'm so excited that the Alumni Association wanted to venture into this foray of uh, communication and outreach. Uh, you know, being a 146-year young university with, as you said, over 51,000 alums, uh, scattered throughout the Commonwealth as well as the United States and the world, I think this is a great venue to try to communicate in a personal way, in a immediate way, on on matters of, of great interest to everyone. 
and and your your talk about strategic planning hits home in in that um, it's clear to me that in thinking ahead and I want to take a few minutes and talk about um, the the clarion not of today but where I see clarion in in 2017 and 2018 uh, because I think our alums are going to be quite impressed and maybe even surprised a little bit about where Clarion's going and where I know we're going to be in 2017. Uh, as you know, our, our mission is to provide transformative learning uh, through innovative, nationally recognized programs that are delivered in a very student-centered manner. And I think when I think when I consider the notions of transformative learning, that's very ambitious. So it's really uh, learning that's designed and meant to change lives. And one of the things several alumni have told me over the years is their time at Clarion was transformative. So I think that's the language that we've been inspired and continue to be inspired by what alums tell us of their time here because we're continuing that tradition of providing that for today's students. So the Clarion of 2017, uh, we're going to continue to grow nationally recognized programs. We're emphasizing programs in several key areas, and we're being quite successful because we're seeing growing enrollments in those areas, such as business, science, technology, health professions, and education. The other thing is, uh, as a result of our strategic planning work, we have a mission here that by 2017, we want to be a leader in what's called high-impact educational practices, or what we often call HIP, or HIPs, high-impact practices and things like internships, field work, uh, involving uh, undergraduate students and graduate students in research, working with our students to become entrepreneurs uh, either while they're students or, or right after graduation, working on campus in meaningful ways, working in the community and studying abroad. Those are all examples of HIPs or high impact practices that are growing. Uh, for example, service learning where students work out in the community and then they come back working with faculty to reflect on that work. This year alone, we've had almost 400 students contribute in 2,300 hours of service work. And they work on that within the context of their classes. They reflect on it, and it's really taking the classroom learning to the field. And that's a great hip practice for Clarion. So our future is more programs. I'm thrilled to be able to report that this week, our faculty senate approved now to move on through the process of approvals to our trustees later this week and on to the Board of Governors, a, a, a really historic moment. We're pursuing right now approval to be able to offer our first doctorate. Our first applied doctorate will be in the Doctorate of Nursing Practice or the DNP. In addition, efforts are underway to offer a traditional bachelor's, bachelor's of Science in Nursing program at the Clarion campus. That's evidence of growth and excitement in the area of health professions. The other exciting program that our Faculty Senate approved this week, what, and again, there's multiple approvals yet ahead, uh, is to uh, be able to offer a bachelor's degree in criminal justice administration, which would complement our current associate's degree. What's great about this program, one of the things we've learned, particularly in Western Pennsylvania, there is no criminal justice administration degree available completely online, and this will be. So working professionals, working throughout Western Pennsylvania, and quite frankly, working throughout the world, will be able to earn this bachelor's degree from Clarion University, and we couldn't be more proud. That's great. Yeah. I mean, I think the idea is our number one goal is student success. It's student success followed by faculty and staff success. And adding these kinds of programs that based on compelling evidence meet present and future workforce needs, they meet the needs and interests of our students and their families in the Commonwealth. That's at the core of what we're doing at Clarion. By 2017, these programs will be fully underway. Let me talk a little bit about engagement. I've mentioned service learning and high impact practices. I mean, these aren't just um, noble aspirations. Uh, it's clear that, and the research is robust, that high impact practices, uh, working with students to apply what they learn in the classroom is appealing to students. That, that's something that distinguishes Clarion in a unique way. It's something that draws people to Clarion. It always has actually, ever since we started out as a normal school, because of uh, student teaching where you apply what you've learned in the classroom into the field with children and with master teachers, you know, was the earliest form of high impact practice. 
So it really does speak to the Clarion history and heritage about applying students applying what they learn while they're students. And we're going to continue to do that. It also shows, the, the research is clear, that students who are actively engaged in these high impact practices are much more likely to graduate from college. And so it's not just about recruiting a great talent of students, it's working, working with them to graduate and be successful. Let me also say Clarion continues to be an economic engine to the region as a major employer and community asset. We continue to work with the communities of Clarion and Venango in looking at innovative and creative, creative ways through the, the brain power of our faculty, the energy and enthusiasm of our students, to look at a variety of ways to continue to strengthen the economics of our region. And we are needed now more than ever. You can continue to see us doing more and, 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 and egotastically serving be between now and 2017. Now, to make all this possible, I am completely convinced that by 2017, when we finish the current strategic plan that we're under, that Clarion University will be thriving financially. We will have balanced operating budgets, which really simply means our revenues will equal our expenses. We will have increased our enrollment from this year's fall 2013 enrollment of 6,000, a little over 6,000, 6,080, to over 6,600 by the fall of 2017. The types of academic programs I've, I've talked about that will be underway in 2017 will be evidence of increasing enrollments, as well as the efforts we've been making and the progress we've been making toward increased retention of our students we are recruiting. So we ex expect to have at least an enrollment of 6,600 by fall 2017. I think the other thing I can expect that will help us in terms of being uh, financially thriving so we can pursue our mission of quality and excellence to students, their families, and the community is we will have finished a successful multi-million dollar fundraising campaign that will help our students, our faculty, and our campus be successful. I think Clarion uh, University of 2017 is also a time that we're going to get to celebrate our 150th, yes. our own sesquicentennial in 2017. And our future is bright. We have a tremendous amount of work ahead of us. I, uh, we're all working together, the students with the faculty and the staff and the alumni. Alumni, you all are particularly important. You're the legacy. You're the past, you're the present, and you have a good idea of what you want in the future. And you are part of showing the world how egotastic Clarion University is and what it bodes for, for future and present students today. So I think 2017 is looking good. We're going to continue our online learning. We're going to develop our on-ground learning. Uh, in terms of particularly the Clarion campus here, uh, between now and 2017, we have several major improvements to what I call the built environment. By 2017, Beck Hall will reopen. You have to understand, I've been here since 2010. It's never been open. Uh, in fact, I won't even go up to the upper floors because of the, the, the allegations that there's a ghost up there. So, but by 2015, we anticipate Beck Hall will be open and its purpose will be student success. Like I said, that's our number one goal. And so we're gonna relocate a variety of services and programs that are clearly designed to be helpful to students in their success in living and preparing for their dreams. Services such as admissions, financial aid, registrar, dean of students, our counseling services, health services, mentoring, tutoring, academic development and support in a variety of ways will then occupy Beck in a way that we expect will create synergies and partnerships with students so that they can be even more successful as students and beyond. Uh, another project that I expect uh, will go underway, uh, it's still in the development stages, but I'm so excited about it, I, I do want to mention it, is a new housing project. Now for some alumni, they're going to feel like that, the, that Nair and Wilkinson are, are new housing. But I have to give you a spoiler alert. Those facilities were built in 1970. They're no longer new housing to today's students. Uh, they are now 43 years young, and they've really served their purpose. And one of the things that's clear to us is it costs almost as much to build brand new housing uh, as it would to completely refurb uh, Wilkinson and Nair, which is badly needed right now. So based on the advice of architects and engineers and many folks who we've talked to and listening to our students, uh, our plans are to uh, tear down uh, Wilkinson and Nair and in its place present new housing 
that it won't be over the top. It'll be tried and true clarion. It'll be, it'll get the job done, but it's going to be on Main Street. It'll be on Main Street in a way that our students have said that they, they very much want. It'll be where on the first floor on both sides of Main Street, so whether you're on where Still Hall is, our College of Business, or you're on where Carrier on that side where the administration building is, that you can live on either side and be on the second or third or fourth floor. And on the first floor will be things like we're going to move our Starbucks, which is kind of in campus a little bit to Main Street. We're going to move the bookstore from Gemmel, which is actually kind of hard to tell people where that is, onto Main Street. And we're going to have meeting rooms where residents can have events in the evening or continuing ed can do events or however these kinds of multi-use rooms can be helpful to the university, our alumni, and the community. And I think a, a really great exciting thing there is we intend to open a theater back on Main Street. Uh, it'll, it'll serve instructional purposes uh, by day, but we'll have a student uh, organization running it, and I am really determined to bring back uh, movies uh, and theater and small stage efforts to Main Street, as David, you told me in so yeah. many ways, <laughs> through the Garby yes. and through the Orpheum, the yeah, Orpheum right. used to be. And I think that's part of a college town, and the idea that the students will run it, they'll decide what should go in there, and I think it'll bring a life back to Main Street that is currently not there, but so many people want, with a variety of mixed use with the residences above for our freshmen and sophomores. And it's going to be a very exciting project that we anticipate will open fall 2015. To top it off, because I'm not done, uh, we're going to do a complete refurb with Tiffin. Uh, again, many of you who may feel like, what, what do you mean, Tiffin Gymnasium? It's brand new. Well, it isn't. And it's really, it's been used so much and it has been so successful that it really needs a complete updo. Uh, and working with the state, uh, we have funds in hand. And in fact, we have the funding in hand for all the projects I'm mentioning. Uh, we're going to pursue a complete redo, which includes a new natatorium, a whole new arena experience to replace the gym for, uh, inter for P our PE classes and our intercollegiate Volleyball, basketball, wrestling, you know, a, a, as well as a rec pool for uh, regular folks. So you've got uh, an auditorium, which will be the appropriate temperature. It'll be an excellent venue to swim in and spectate, uh, as well as a pool that's very recreational and more health oriented uh, and more leisurely. Uh, and then a great arena so that we can enjoy uh, just some tremendous uh, intercollegiate athletic experiences. Like, for example, tonight our women's uh, volleyball um, is, are playing in the PSAC quarterfinals. Our women's volleyball are the PSAC West champions. And so that kind of outstanding pursuit, and they have a really strong GPA that I believe is over 3.4. So they're winners in the classroom and on the court. And hopefully we'll we'll find out before we end tonight how they yes. did. So right. we'll give you a late flash. If there we you get go. A, if we well, get let it. me stop right now. I, as you can tell, I'm very excited about our programs and facilities and what Clarion 2017 is going to look like. But what I'd like to do now is to find out if anybody has any questions for us. Right. And because I'm very interested in in helping uh, alums uh, understand what they care about at uh, Clarion and, and bring them more late breaking news. Fine. To start out, uh, we talked a little bit about the Alumni Association and the makeup of, uh, that really scatters all across the, the globe. Uh, what Would you expand a little bit more on the role of the alumni in building a successful institution? How do you see us helping uh, you to, to reach the goals you have? Sure. Like I said, alums uh, have a very special, special role at, at any university. You're the past because you were students here and now you've completed and you're living your life. You're the present because you continue to come back and experience those wonderful experiences, whether it's the Autumn Leaf Festival, homecoming, an athletic event, or a lecture, or a play, or sitting in on of the variety of experiences that makes Clarion University, Clarion University. So you're the past and you're the present. You're also the future in that you have opinions on what meant the most to you and what you hope for that future Golden Eagles will have in their life. And so I think one is continuing to dialogue with us and let us know of those things that were part of your past, mean so much to you now, and you hope for the future. Continue to let us know what matters. So I think it's dialogue and feedback. It's advocacy. 
Uh, I think it's in talking with whether it's state uh, officials, because we are a state university, that where uh, state tax dollars should be used to support Clarion from your perspective. I can continuing to advocate for that, whether it's for more uh, assistance to help our current students pay to be here. Um, right now in, in 2013, uh, today's college student is paying for 76% of our operating budget. Now for our alumni who were alums, let's say, when I went to college in the late 70s, uh, quite frankly, the state then was paying over 80% of your costs and you were actually only paying 20%. So I think continuing to talk with our elected officials about what you think of state, how you think state dollars should be used to support public higher education is important. So advocacy is important, communication is important. Recruitment, recruitment, recruitment of future students are important. Whether I, I, I challenge every single alumni to send their own kids to Clarion and continue the legacy. And I also challenge you, uh, go next door to your neighbor and give them the pitch on why Clarion's good for their Absolutely, kids. Absolutely, yes. It is about recruitment. And if there's anything we can do to give you information for that, email us at, at info at clarion.edu. Email me at president at clarion.edu because we want to help you help us build our enrollment. Clarion, like in so many ways in western Pennsylvania, we're a best kept secret and we've decided to stop the secret and to tell everybody. So as alumni, it's giving us feedback because you're the reason why we're here. Uh, it's being an advocate and it's being a recruiter. Great, thank you. Sure. Question has been received from Pat Kale and he asks, will we see major advertising to promote our education program and its continued existence so that the students, guidance counselors, principals, and the general public still know that Clarion is the best choice if a student would like to become an educator. Sure. Pat, thanks for the question. I know we've, talk, we've been talking about this. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things I've asked the faculty to do under the leadership of the provost is to take us to a next era of work regarding uh, teacher uh, education or what I would call educator preparation. We have, a, again, a very long history, 146-year history here of uh, teacher preparation. Uh, it's a tough field right now. Uh, it's under, uh, there's a lot of chaos. There are multiple ways one can be uh, a professional educator these days. Uh, there are many people who have many opinions on the future of educator preparation. And I've asked our faculty to focus on what we can do best to the, prep, the, the preparation of future teachers, how we can contribute to Western Pennsylvania and beyond, and, and to focus in such a way through the launching of a new school of education. Uh, it's bold. I think it's ambitious. Uh, I know our faculty are up for it. I know our alumni, I ask our alumni to work with us. So many of our alums are in uh, our professional educators, whether you're teachers or counselors, principals or superintendents, currently working or retired, you have a lot to give. Our faculty need to listen. They need to ask the, the wonderful question is, you know, what should the future of educator preparation be? And what should Clarion's role be to that future? Now that's what I'm asking for. But Pat's question is, what are we going to do at Clarion? I just get all choked up about this. <laughs> what are we going to do at Clarion to get the, the word out or to get what I'll call the Clarion call out about our School of Education and our education, educational preparation program? We're spending more money now as a university to market our programs than we ever have. And we're going to spend even more specifically on the launching of a new School of Education. And we're going to be very clear on which programs are our signature programs and our signature programs will be defined by our faculty. Our faculty are meeting and working now and they'll continue through the spring in collaboration with a larger university initiative to establish and focus our brand. Who are we at Clarion? What is Clarion University about? If you come to Clarion as a prospective student and you give it your best at the end of the time when you complete your credential, what will you know and what will you be able to do? How will we prepare you for your dreams? Those are the big questions that have been placed at the faculty. We've got many groups looking at it. So they're going to deliver on that promise. We will deliver administratively 
on marketing campaigns and communication campaigns. We're already doing things we've never done before. In various urban markets within 200 miles of here, if you go and watch a movie, don't be surprised if you don't see Clarion University in the ads before you see the movie. Uh, don't be surprised if you're driving on a highway that you see billboards you haven't seen before. Don't be surprised if you don't see commercials and radio spots in places you never had before. We are making strategic investments and you will be seeing more about Clarion. It will be also about what we do best in our areas of business, education, science, technology, and health professions. We are getting our story out and I'm asking you to help us. Great, thank you. We have another question from Mary Rose Reno, class of 1955. And she asks, any comment on the proposal by U.S. Representative Allison Schwartz running for the governor that students should get free tuition to a state school after two years in a community college. Wow, I, yeah. I wasn't aware of that proposal. I would certainly love to talk with the representative even more about her thoughts on that. I do like the, what I think I hear in that is that uh, her view is the Commonwealth through the Treasury, through the dollars we all pay as, as taxpayers, uh, it's a wise investment to invest in people to seek post-secondary post education. Uh, I think I also applaud her for valuing the, the community colleges. I'm a huge fan of two-year institutions. They have a tremendous role in our society. I mean, in, 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 a, in a way, two-year community colleges are definitely a, an American invention. We started that whole movement a little, a little over 100 years ago. And it is a tremendously powerful thing, community colleges and communities. And I'm proud that Clarion University has stepped up, uh, primarily led through our efforts in Venango College, to be a, the community college for this area. Because as many of you know, and I'll just remind you in case either you didn't know or you thought that might have changed, the area around Clarion for many counties has no community college. So I applaud her efforts and interest in putting that out there because that would start the dialogue. Uh, of what should taxpayer dollars do if, in terms of the investment of post-secondary education. So I'd look forward to talking with her further. I'm glad you asked the question. Great. Another question from Joe Laudanowski, class of 2005. With declining enrollment as well as declining population in the region, will you ever invest in athletics, Greek life, and other activities to make Clarion more attractive to potential students? Uh, the follow-up, aren't athletics, Greek, and band members the largest contingent of alumni, donors, and shouldn't uh, we be investing in the future donors? Well, I mean, in, in terms of the question about will you ever invest, we do invest. Uh, now, I, I can tell you in the time I've been president here, uh, our resources have been very tight, and we've had to be ex extraordinary stewards of our resources. Uh, so I agree with you that we've not been able to invest throughout the institution the way I would like. That's across. That's the academic programs as well as the co-curricular and extracurricular programs. Uh, Clarion uh, certainly puts the M in modest. We are extra extraordinary stewards of funds in doing quite a bit with very little. So let me be clear that I would like to invest more in, all, in the areas you've mentioned. I do definitely want to first invest uh, in, in a balanced way with our curricular areas in the academic programs I've mentioned. I can say, though, that I've been so impressed with how we have used our dollars, whether they're dollars received by the state or in many cases for the activities that, were, that he's just mentioned, uh, those are dollars usually funded through student fees. And you're right, they are connected to our enrollment. And we've had a downturn in enrollment since 2008 that has restricted those dollars quite a bit. So really, the best way that we can invest in the areas that you've mentioned is to increase our enrollment. By increasing our enrollment, we'll have more dollars that can flow back into the very activities that I th it sounds like you value and I value as well. I mean, I think a place like Clarion is about the curricular and the co-curricular working together. It's about having great experiences in the classroom and also having, you know, being in the band being in student government, being in a fraternity or sorority, and that whole total experience is the Clarion College experience. I do have to say, though, I'm so impressed with our Greek life, with our fraternity sorority life. They do a tremendous job. 
I also have a great deal of respect for our faculty senate and faculty governments. They do a tremendous job, particularly they are tasked in many ways to distribute the funds that you're talking about supporting the areas you've mentioned. It's been a tough job and they've done a good one. So I, I, I look forward to, as we increase our enrollments, making increased investments, and at the same time, I'm very proud of how we've done quite a bit with very little. Talking about money, uh, just a <laughs> question that came up uh, as we talked earlier about some of the uh, construction programs that are being uh, put underway, Beck Hall and the new residence hall and Tip and Jim and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have asked, uh, why not take some of that money and put it into the general budget, you know, do a little less work on, on some of these things and throw it into the general budget. I, I, I know the answer, but I, I think <laughs> it would be good maybe to, to sure. touch on that just briefly because of the, uh, sometimes people wonder, well, why are you doing all of this work out there when uh, there, are, uh, there are holes in the budget that you're, we're trying to, to close? Well, I think in looking at a university, which is a complex place, that has multiple funding sources or multiple ways we receive money to do the job we're asked to do. Uh, the, the projects, particularly for Tiffin and Beck Hall, are state-funded projects. But whether we uh, use the money or not, it doesn't affect our operating. There are dollars that are specifically dedicated to building projects. So if we rejected those funds and sent them back to the state, they would not be uh, reallocated to our operating. And that's beyond me. Those are the rules established by the state, and I have no control over them. So my view is we're going to use the dollars that are rightfully ours to continue to build and maintain Clarion as a beautiful, engaging campus, because quite frankly, the most important thing I hope to convey today to anyone who's listening is its enrollment. It's building a quality enrollment of students in ways that allow us to fulfill our mission. By regaining and rebuilding our enrollment, the financing of our operating budget will be improved. That's how we'll do it. But we need to offer students a reasonably good quality experience, and that's at the academic programs as well as the built environment. As to housing, our housing project, uh, you know, for decades now has been a venture where the rents the students pay pay for housing. So we receive no state funds for that, nor do non-residents pay for housing. Uh, so really, that also doesn't really help our overall problem. Uh, growing our enrollment will help our current operating challenges and making the case with our elected officials in the state that we are a good investment for state tax dollars. That will help our operating budget. Thank you. Uh, we're about halfway through our, our hour evening here, and I just want to remind you that if there are uh, any uh, any of you who have uh, questions that you've thought oh. of during this time? Uh, oh, we, we are, we are, I will first of all tell you to remember to email us at info at clarion.edu. And I'm told by people in the room that we need to take a 10 minute intermission for technical reasons. So don't go away. And may maybe we'll know what the score is on the volleyball exactly. game when we get back. We'll try to fill okay. you in here. All right. All right. Don't Thanks. go away. We'll be back. Back on. And uh, technology, you know, is a wonderful thing <laughs> when it works. So someone like me from the class of 1965, almost 49 years ago, uh, we were still using typewriters and carbon paper and what have you, so uh, uh, it's understandable when something happens, it, it, it just is the way of the world today. So we're, we hope that you didn't uh, turn us off and you're back with us and, and, and we will continue on. We still have about... Uh, 20 minutes to go. I, I do like to report that our women's volleyball did win the first game. So Wonderful. They're, they're playing the second game, and as we hear more, I'll let you know. That's great. <laughs> so we'll, yeah, we'll keep you right up to date. Well, we've had a lot of questions about the music program, which has been mm -hmm. very important here with all of the changes that are mm -hmm. being uh, mm -hmm. discussed. What's the future of music at Clarion University, which would kind of summarize the question? Sure, thanks. Uh, it, it's been tough, and it was a very difficult decision uh, to approve uh, the recommendation to put our music education program in moratorium. Uh, the, the, the simple answer here is we did not have enough students to sustain the program. It was becoming a low enrolled program and it was not looking like anywhere anytime soon that it was going to rebound to the level of enrollments that we would have to have to sustain it. How, at the same time, uh, we remain firmly committed 
to uh, music as a part of our general education and committed to continuing musical activities such as the bar marching band and choral activities. So I think to, to make it very clear, we're putting in moratorium and shutting and winding down, eliminating the music ed program, but we are continuing music classes, uh, music courses for the general ed and also marching band and choral. So it's a t it was a very painful dis decision. It was very difficult, but because of the low enrollments, uh, we just couldn't continue it. We are at a point in higher education throughout this country, and particularly at, at, in Western Pennsylvania, uh, of having to be more focused on programs that have the interests of our students and employers. And so it really does become about having to be very keen about where's our enrollment growth and investing in those areas, which we are, because we are hiring faculty in our growing enrollment areas, and at the same time, doing the very tough and difficult and painful work of uh, winding down or stopping programs that just have lost their enrollment. And that's something that has been discussed at length uh, in the uh, program uh, uh, plans that you have, the workforce uh, plan, and that's available online if anybody yes. wants to see more detail about that and why things have developed the way they have the right. with over the course of time. And I, and I do give an awful lot of thanks, David, to you and the many alumni who've attended meetings and sessions who were part of strategic planning, who mm -hmm. attended forums, who've sent emails, who've had conversations over coffee and talking mm -hmm. about the, uh, the future of our academic programs, concerns about, you know, and, and how painful it is when we have to no longer support a program, but also the mm -hmm. excitement and the interest of where are new programs. Yeah. Uh, so that's where we're at, and I'm, I'm glad you asked. Thank you. Well, and we, as, as I mentioned earlier, some of the things I talked about, the Alumni Association, we worked our strategic planning with Clarion University's strategic right. plan so that we parallel and we're trying to reach the same goals and, and walk down the same roads as, as the university in, in total here. Uh, we have a question from T. Zimmerman, class of 1974. Where does Clarion currently rank in student retention and graduation as compared to the other PASHI or Pennsylvania Association or, uh, State Schools of Higher Education? Uh, universities, and how do you see the workforce plan improving Clarion standing with other PASHI schools? Well, like most of higher education in our fellow PASHI schools, retention has been a top priority and often a major challenge. I'm very pleased to be able to report to you this evening that because of some tremendously successful efforts with our faculty and under the leadership of our provost, Dr. Nowacek, and our deans, that we were able to post an all-time high retention from last year's freshman class to now they are now this year's sophomore class. Our historic, our, our traditional retention from uh, freshman to sophomore was barely at uh, 70 percent, and this year we've posted a 75 percent retention, which means that there's 53 more students here now because of our retention efforts. Uh, that's advising tutoring, mentoring, an early intervention program where faculty are notifying us at week three if they have concerns uh, about students who are not coming to class, are not prepared, are not really all present. We have now a system of folks in place to work with those students very early on so that they can be successful and it's paying off. Great. That's good. Good. And it it's interesting to me to know that our athletes, for example, as you mentioned, are all maintaining high oh. averages, uh, high QPAs. Absolutely. It is, it is I, really I, terrific. I couldn't be more proud of our student athletes. They, they are good men and women, they're good students, and they're very competitive athletically in the sport they love. Right. I'm proud that we are a Division II in, you know, program. Uh, we are in a very competitive conference across all our sports, and it really is the right balance between quality learning and great competition. Great. We have another question, and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll once again mention uh, as we close the last uh, uh, 15 minutes or so here, uh, remember to email your questions if you have them, info, info at clarionedu. So mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. we are happy to take as many as we can still fit in for this evening here. This question is from Randall Tenner. I heard at one point that there was an effort to reduce the number of Pennsylvania state schools or at least avoid duplication of courses or majors in order to save money 
for the Commonwealth and to reduce duplication of programs at institutions that are geographically close, such as Clarion and Slippery Rock, with the prolif pro proliferation of online and community college programs that are similar to state system offerings, is that something being considered? I, I think the way I would answer that question is it, it's something that is occurring, that it's not occurring top down, it's occurring this notion of marketplace of courses and degrees and colleges and universities. Uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania has a rich, rich history of some of the finest institutions of higher learning in this nation. Mm -hmm. and, and I think what we're at right now is for a variety of reasons, uh, students are, are choosing in that marketplace. They're choosing courses, they're choosing credentials and in institutions. In some ways, it's very dynamic and it's very exciting. In other ways, it is challenging and daunting. So I don't support top-down efforts uh, what you know, whether it's uh, a legislative effort, a gubernatorial effort, or a system effort to dictate what Clarion should do. I believe what we should do is listen to our students, listen to our faculty, listen to employers and our regional economic needs and make good decisions. We can no longer be all things to all people. We have to focus, hence my earlier answer regarding music. Mm -hmm. At the same time, our focus is we're winding down in certain programs and we're expanding others based on what students, their families, and employers want. That's the consolidating efforts that are occurring. That's the idea of duplication or expansion. That's what will be most successful. I do not suggest that it be done top down or from people outside of who have what I'll say, who've got skin in the game, who are part of Clarion's past, present, and future. We will focus and we are doing that now and for the most part that's a lot of fun and it's energizing it occasionally can be painful and difficult but we are up to that task and we're doing it right now so uh, there is I have no knowledge of any effort to eliminate any university I wouldn't suggest it I think the future of Pennsylvania uh, is a future of education I don't recommend top-down out of the university dictates on what courses and degrees we should offer I think working collaborate the leadership of this campus, working collaboratively with our faculty and our governance and our students and our alumni can make those decisions. Each of the 14 schools are unique and have their own identity and, and have been there for a long time. Long time. And so uh, Clarion continues and, and we're, we're not going to, to we're not going away and nor I, are any of the others. I am quite enthusiastic about that yes. and will continue to be so. Absolutely. We have another uh, question here. Uh, can you uh, share with us some of the programs and tools that will be available to help students succeed at Clarion? Uh, what will be a part of the new Center for Stu Student Success that is coming up? The, the Center for Student Success will be in, in Beck Hall, as I've, I mentioned earlier, about 2017. And it'll be a, a multi-departmental effort that will involve faculty and staff and, and upper-class students uh, in helping students succeed academically. It'll be varied. It'll have a variety of projects and efforts coming out of it. Uh, one of the things that's being worked on right now, uh, and it, this is, again, very much based on very solid national evidence that shows these efforts are very successful, is uh, introducing a first-year seminar where we would uh, schedule every first-year student to be in a seminar that connects in content areas that they have interest in, so academic content areas they have interest in, along with solid information about how to be successful as a college student. So it's that combination uh, of efforts that we think will continue to strengthen our retention. It's first year seminar, continued early intervention on the part of our faculty in terms of students' preparation and attendance, uh, continued mentoring and tutoring, and also doubling our efforts in the area of advising, academic advising, life advising, uh, you know, to help that student be the best prepared they can be to rise to the Clarion Challenge. Great. I know we touched a little bit on this before, but uh, what are some of the new academic programs that are being developed? Uh, can you think of some of the uh, uh, the new things that we're, we're really working hard to, to do here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I mentioned the, the nursing development of the uh, doctorate in nursing practice, a bachelor of science in nursing, and criminal justice. 
I can also tell you I've had conversations across the board uh, under development in a variety of areas. Uh, I mean, I, all I can say is watch out, education is coming. Our School of Education and the whole approach to educator preparation is going to be very exciting here at Clarion. I can't let anything out right now because the faculty are engaged on this, yes. uh, but we will promote what the faculty believe in and it's going to knock your socks off. It'll be broad, it'll be meaningful, it will be online, it'll be on ground, it will work with two-year community colleges. Uh, we want to honor and engage our alums. We need our alums on this uh, because we need to hear from you on what you'd like in a new school of education. So let me know about that. Uh, I think in terms of other academic areas that you can see is last year we launched a, in the College of Business a, a bachelor's to MBA combination where students from the very beginning in certain select areas could start their bachelor's degree and know that how it sequences in to the MBA. So those kinds of innovative uh, multi-credential combinations uh, we've become known for throughout the state and we want to continue to leverage. Our students are so serious these days, they already know, they might not know the exact area of study, but they know I want a bachelor's degree in this general area and I want it to lead to a master's degree in this general area and we want to from the very beginning help them map that out from the start so that they can have the total learning experience they want. We're, so we're looking at uh, enhancements in areas of business, particularly the MBA, in the area of science and technology. We're looking all over the place. We are looking at our workforce areas and continued development in the natural gas industry, in the area of energy studies. We're looking at a variety of innovations on ground and online to continue those efforts. We have such great strength in our faculty in science and technology that you can bet we're going to continue to develop it. Just like health professions, Clarion has enjoyed w one of the most established nursing programs in the state. And from that, we've launched off into respiratory programs. We're looking at a variety of other programs that will be on ground and online at the associate's, bachelor's, and master's levels. So I think that whole c cross section is very exciting. I think the other thing that's going to distinguish us is multidisciplinary programs combining many of these things I've talked about in unique ways that meet the interests and the excitement of our students. Great. And you, you pretty much answered the, que the next question, which is how does education fit into Clarion University's future? Uh, because I think a lot of the alumni out there especially remember Clarion, of course, as primarily a teacher education institution. Sure. That's how it started, of course, uh, going to back to Clarion Normal School and Clarion State Teachers College sure. and even Clarion State College. Some of the fields were just very, very few fields other than teacher ed were starting. So I think that there's a big concern out there that teacher ed is, is not going to be as important. So that question uh, came as, a, uh, as kind of a follow-up, I think. So. Well, I, I have to tell you, um, teacher preparation has changed very since your much. time, David. Yes, I'm okay. <laughs> very Now, much um, as you know, but many yes. people might not, um, my great aunt Daisy is a 1916 alum of Clarion University and she got her education degree when it was Clarion Normal. Well, this isn't Aunt Daisy's uh, School of Education anymore. No. And we're in a whole different realm, we have a whole different role and a whole different future. So Clarion University always has been an educator's university and it'll continue to be. Stay tuned for the details. Great. Well, I wanna go back, we're getting close to the end here, but I wanna go back and, and mention a few things as far as the upcoming dates because for the alumni, if I can find them on here, <laughs> here we go. Uh, and we want to remind you again that we need good people to serve Clarion. If you're close enough, please come and help us on some of the events that are scheduled. If you have an interest, come and ask for information about serving on the alumni board. We need good members. We have several people leaving in the next year. Their terms are expiring, and so we need some good people to finish and fill those vacancies. Now, we're going to have uh, a lot of alumni have asked us to bring the uh, alumni reunions, the class reunions, away from the Autumn Leaf Festival. And so we've listened to that. We had a, a web survey and a, well o a, a large percentage, well over 30 some percent of the people said, I would come, but I don't like it with Autumn Leaf. So we've decided to uh, move it back to June 6th, 7th, and 8th. 
and you'll have a chance even to come and live in one of the residence halls if you want to do that. We're making those arrangements. Details are still being worked out, but we will be in touch with you uh, with mailings and information on the website. Keep looking in. Now, homecoming this year is a little earlier than usual, Autumn Leaf Festival, and that's, that's still going on. There'll still be activities here. That's September 26th and 27th, 2014. And, of course, as I said, there are other volunteer opportunities that come along through the year. If you have any interest at all, please contact the alumni office. And uh, the information is on the website. You can contact them or call here directly, and they will offer uh, any assistance that they can to you. Dr. Whitney, I want to thank you very much for this, this historic event. This is the first time we've done this. And so we are going to do this again in the spring. It will be March 4th. So put that on your calendar, March 4th, 2014. And we will hopefully see you back here uh, then. We will uh, have questions again. We will be soliciting for your input. And we would like you to, uh, to participate. Tell your friends, tell your Clarion grads, tell anybody who's interested uh, to look in and find out what's happening at this fine institution. Thank you so much for your participation, for your interest, and if you have any further questions and follow-up, please keep getting in touch with us and we'll try to keep you up to date and answer. Any last minute uh, things from the volleyball team? We're still... Uh, Anything? They're tied 1-1, one, one, so go Eagles! Okay, thank you again and good night everyone.